Starting now. Good morning, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 21st edition of Fiki Frames 2020. This Friday event is in a whole new avatar. We are going virtual for the first time in the history of Fiki. We have five days of sessions back to back. Today we have five sessions, starting with the inaugural session, followed by panel discussions and a couple of more panel discussions, and then we have, in the end, another pan or another fireside chat. Uh, over the next five days, we have some eminent personalities also talking uh, to us in conversation with industry leaders. For the first session, I would like to introduce Mr. Dilip Chanoy, Secretary General Fiki, to introduce the panel and take it from there. Mr. Dilip, the stage is all yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, so very, first of all, a very good morning to everybody and hope uh, you and your families and your colleagues and their families are all safe. Uh, Minister Anurag Thakur, Excellency Ambassador of Italy to India, uh, President Sangeeta Reddy, uh, Sri uh, Uday Shankar, Senior Vice President, and Mr. Sanjay Gupta, the uh, Chair of the Media and Entertainment Committee of PIKI, uh, Ms. Kalyani, uh, the Joint Secretary in the Ministry uh, of Entertainment, uh, Information and Broadcasting. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I welcome you to the 21st edition of PIKI Frames, but the first uh, digital uh, PIKI Frames in this new avatar. This uh, edition is totally virtual from its conception to execution. Uh, all our colleagues have worked for it without actually meeting physically. Um, as, as a topic of the inaugural, uh, creative industry has great potential to boost the growth of the Indian economy. It's going to be the next wave to propel the growth of India and the Indian economy, and in fact, the global economy. I would now like to invite uh, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, President Piki to deliver uh, opening remarks. Uh, Dr. Reddy, over to you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and namaste. It is a great pleasure for me to welcome you all to the 21st edition of Fiki Frames in a virtual form. Sri Vincenzo De Luca, Sri Anurag Thakurji, Mr. Uday Shankar, Sanjay Gupta, our Secretary General, Dilip Chinoy, and many others who have joined us today virtually. It is so important for us to stay positive in these difficult times. And since the present COVID crisis has compiled us to interact with each other on this virtual platform, we continue the tradition, a 21 year tradition. This is the 21, 21st edition of Wiki Frames. And so we do so in a virtual platform with the spirit that the show must go on. The media and entertainment sector contributes significantly to the soft power of the nation, boosting employment, value creation, and we produce the largest number of films in multiple languages. This diversity, this capability, and this innate strength of the Indian sector is significant. The large sector, which is also facing significant challenges and compression uh, as we speak today, it's also a sector which I think is noteworthy in the fact that it is primarily intellectual property. It is the creativity, talent, knowledge which gets represented in the form of media and which truly ensures that the world is a global village. As we all know, for many years, there have been fans of our Hindi movies from Russia. There has been a craze of our Tamil movies in Japan. And if you go into any part of Africa, you know that the Indian cinema is recognized because they're always asking about different stars. The intellectual capacity and the freedom of our media and our print is also significant. Piki over the years has not just focused on this sector, but has contributed in many ways uh, towards the development, the evolution, the growth and the independence of this sector. Some of the major achievements of Piki in the past is for the growth of the M&E industry. Our number one, that we worked assiduously for the granting of the industry status for the film sector. Also uh, advocated a five-year tax holiday for multiplexes, which really changed the face of entertainment delivery format. The new TRP measurement, audiovisual co-production co treaty with various countries, working with the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting on a National Center of Excellence in animation, gaming, visual effects, uh, as well as setting up a film facilitation office 
to assist single window clearance these are but a few of the many initiatives which have been taken over the years and as the lines between the formal film entertainment youtube social media sources of information from print to digital all these lines are blurring yet a few facts remain and that is the consumer see authenticity value entertainment and there is a form and a methodology to give it all so fiki will remain committed uh, to supporting the sector uh, there is a lot that we need to do especially this year when the sector has been significantly negatively infect, uh, affected um, please note that there was a slip of the tongue which somehow seems like an intended pun which is not affected but infected and as the country remains so infected but let me move on to say that fiki has worked with the film policy of orissa and madhya pradesh uh, we are working on film policies for chatisgarh jammu and kashmir and various other governments i also want to specially acknowledge the presence of uh, our uh, ambassador uh, to italy italy is a partner country of this edition of frames and this i believe is going to be a watershed uh, initiative and a strong relationship and a cooperation between india and italy in this sector i want to end by not just warmly welcoming all participants but continuing uh, to say that we will overcome this time will pass uh, the period is also meant to build our power and our capability our knowledge and our ties of friendship and bonding and we specially acknowledge and welcome the presence of shri anudha thakur ji the honorable minister of state for finance who has been a friend of the sector who could easily be uh, mistaken for a member of the industry himself uh, and who i believe has on multiple occasion uh, showed his support for this sector as well as fiki in general welcome all of you for this fantastically executed uh, virtual platform uh, creative combination of good thoughts and uh, the power of the industry and the media have a wonderful conference my warm welcome greetings and congratulations to all of you namaste thank you uh, president for those uh, uh, you know three s's that you gave stay positive uh, soft power and most importantly sustain the growth and development of the sector uh, going forward uh, i now uh, like to invite uh, mr uday shankar uh, a media and entertainment industry veteran uh, a great support for fiki frames and now senior a uh, vice president of fiki uh, to give his uh, address please mr uday shankar thank you dilip first and foremost a warm welcome to all the participants honorable minister of state for finance anurag thakur ji your excellency the ambassador of italy to india honorable vincent de luca ji uh, joint secretary mib tca kalyani ji president sangeeta reddy sanjay gupta and everybody else thank you very much for joining in this totally new avatar of fiki frames there isn't probably another media and entertainment uh, event or landmark in in this part of the world or for that matter any part of the world that the entire industry from creative to business that looks forward to every year and this year when the when the event was just on on the eve of its uh, being staged was disrupted because of the covid crisis all of us felt really disheartened and it goes to the great credit of fiki and fiki secretariat and the media and entertainment committee team led by lena jasani that they have found a way to reinvent it and offer it in probably an even more interactive and and uh, digestible format so thank you to all of you for doing that my own association with fiki i just wanted to say that until recently i used to be the chair of fiki media and entertainment committee and now i'm finally i you know i am delighted to welcome my friend and you know colleague for number of years sanjay gupta to take over the reins it it makes me emotional it's the it fiki has come fiki frames has completed 20 years that's a really big landmark you know uh we been participating in this year after year so sometimes we forget exactly what these 20 years have meant to indian media and entertainment industry 
So I just wanted to, you know, tell you that when the when Fiki Frames was launched, it was in India was a really fledgling industry as far as media and entertainment was concerned. It was the total size of the industry was barely about four dollars across television, print, radio, and everything included. And it was largely it wasn't even considered a very serious business. It was considered a business of power. If you were in news, it was considered a business of glamour and entertainment, but that's about it. Today, it is about a $20, $25 billion industry. It's, a, it's sad that uh, the industry will take a huge hit this year on account of the disruption that COVID-19 has caused. But this is where the industry is. From about 100 channels in, two, two, in 2000, when Fiki Frames was first held, today we have over 900 channels in this country. The size of the print business, which was just about a billion, billion and a half dollars, is now at $4 billion. And India remains one of the few countries where print is reasonably healthy. Uh, and the big emergence in this period has been, of course, of the digital industry, which is, which is big, successful, and has already become the nucleus of, of media and entertainment sector. It's also reflected in FIKI frames, uh, in, in FIKI, Media and Ent Entertainment Committee, with the take over of Sanjay Gupta as the head of media entertainment. And uh, a lot has changed in this industry. And I, I cannot but recall my own association for a minute. So please bear with me. I, my story of getting into Fiki has been, uh, ha is a very interesting story. I, I, was, I didn't even know as a news editor and, and journalist, I did not even know what role could I play. But the then Secretary General of Fiki, Amit Mitra, who was a friend, he persuaded me to join Fiki, and there I ran into this legendary visionary, an amazing man, late Yash Chopra, who persuaded me to come and become active in Fiki. Frankly, I did not even know what role I would play and why SG was so persuasive. But he was persuasive, and you could not say no to him. And there I came into Fiki in in 2010, and uh, he. He persuaded me to become the chair of Fiki Broadcast Forum. And then a few years later, I, had, I, I took over Fiki Media and Entertainment Committee. The one thing that, I, that it did for me is to understand and embrace the media and entertainment sector in all its nuances and details. So I have just one message to say to all the youngsters who might have logged in today. The time spent on forums like Fiki Frames and Fiki Media and Entertainment Committee is not time is not a distraction is not time wasted it allows you to understand the sector better it allows you to benefit the sector better and it allows you to contribute to the sector and unless all of these happen our own businesses will not grow we have seen the role that fiki and fiki frames have played in the growth of media and entertainment business and i think it is despite all the setbacks that we are facing this year and hurdles that we are facing those are really temporary and i think we we can easily overcome them and we are ready in this sector to make the next big leap to a much bigger and much more successful global media and entertainment business but for that a few things need to change as i you know as i wind up my formal association with fiki media and entertainment forum not from fiki where i continue to be senior vice president i have to say that a few things that still remain unfinished, continue to, to trouble me. And I think the next few years, we should focus on how to change all of that. The biggest bane of the industry in this country, especially for print, TV, and now even for digital, has remained its disproportionate dependence on advertising. Advertise, as the industry has grown, its dependence on advertising has grown. Usually, this number is, uh, is mentioned that advertising revenues in, 20, in, in year 2000 used to be just about a billion dollars, and now that number is $10 billion. It has helped the growth of the industry, it has sustained the industry, and all the participants have benefited from it. But it's also been a bit of a, a, bit of a distraction because globally the industry has grown, whether it is newspapers and magazines, whether it is TV, or whether it is other forms of content delivery, they have benefited from building a direct-to-consumer relationship where the consumer pays for the product. In this country, and truth be told, all of us are guilty of this. 
we we decided to be short sighted we decided to subsidize our products and we decided in order to you know to create hurdles for smaller in you know challengers we decided to take charge of you know to 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 subsidize our businesses for the for the buyer for the consumer and and get the money from the advertiser that has become a, a very very big setback for the industry and if this industry has to grow to the next level i think the one the one thing that must be fixed is our ability and our desire to to get people to pay for what they consume that's fair and that's the only way this industry can can grow this year's setback for media and entertainment is going to you know be very very severe this is one of the industries which people do not often realize is going to be hurt very badly because of the covid setback and that is primarily because of our our disproportionate dependence on advertising and i think years ahead we must fix that the second thing that i should mention while president sangeeta reddy mentioned the growth of the films business and theatrical exhibition and even television content newspaper those are all great those are all very impressive uh, achievements however for a country of this size we should be doing a lot better our ambitions in the area of content remain really very small we are very happy winning the you know in television winning the trp or or or, or bark wars of every thursday and as long as we are going ahead uh, over the heads of our competitors we feel very good but that really is again a huge distraction the content business has gone truly global and the opportunity to scale it up is much much bigger today intermediaries have been marginalized and we are we have the technology and the ability to go direct to consumer and make a lot build our businesses much bigger and this is not just about tv this is about newspapers this is about digital and this is about all other forms of business we haven't done that and what is worse is that we have also actually been even more short sighted and gone and worked with with agencies like regulators and other competitors to create hurdles in the way of unlocking the power of the business and as a result of that we have not been able to invest in content and we have not taken our ambitions to to the global domain for instance even sm- much smaller countries like south korea like israel like turkey and you know our ambassador is sitting here it countries like italy of course have a much bigger media business their content travels globally indian content let us face it still doesn't travel globally the films do not travel globally television content doesn't travel globally and this is not for lack of creativity this is only because of our short you know smaller ambitions and short sightedness i think the industry should fix that because unless we start start becoming a bigger player or factor in the global content consumption space the business will always be suboptimal and finally for an industry that's growing at this rate we have to we have to expand and create the talent funnel that we have people coming into this business whether it is on the side of news whether it is visual content whether it is digital content we still do not have organized supply funnels of high quality that train writers other technicians directors actors etc and that is becoming a stumbling block and we need to we need to work on that and finally i think this cannot happen and this is you know i, I make a ref, make, make this reference particularly to honorable minister and to the joint secretary but this cannot happen unless the government recognizes the sector to be a part an important part of the economy albeit creative economy that can create jobs businesses wealth and can also create the soft power that president sangeeta reddy was referring to that lead to a greater and bigger and more shiny brand india global it is it, it media has been by and large kept to play a, a marginal role in the industry in, in in indian economy and that has hurt the country and that has hurt the brand of the country globally i think it's time that we started fixing that and when we look to come out of the covid crisis that probably is the best opportunity to do a complete pivot 
and start thinking about it. Thank you very much. I once again thank everyone in Fiki Media and Entertainment Committee to, you know, for supporting me, helping me and embracing me, and of course, sometimes suffering me for over a decade. Thank you very much. Over to Sanjay Gupta. Thank you, uh, Uday. Uh, advertisement, ambition, ability to go direct to the customer, uh, availability of talent and acceptance that the sector plays a huge role in the economy. Thank you for those uh, insights. And may I now invite uh, uh, Mr. Sanjay Gupta, country manager and vice president Google India, who has recently taken over as the chairman of the FIKI and Media Entertainment Committee uh, for his address. Uh, Sanjay, over to you. Thank you, Dharab. Uh, a very good morning to all of you and a warm welcome to the very special edition of Wiki Frames. Uh, my regards to the Honorable Minister Sri Prakash Javadekarji and Sri Anurag Thakurji, His Excellency Mr. Vincenzo De Luca, Ambassador of Italy to India, Ms. Kalyani, Joint Secretary MIB, President Fiki, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, my mentor and guide, Mr. Uday Shankar, Secretary General of FIKI, Mr. Dilip Chanoy, and all my colleagues of the media and entertainment industry. When we met last year, the world was a slightly different place. We talked of the exponential impact that digital was delivering for the media and entertainment sector and how we could leverage the power of digital to truly harness the potential of the m &E sector. And we have indeed made progress. The industry had a revenue of $20 billion in 2019, and the digital media accounted for 20% of the industry revenue. Even more heartening is the news that through direct and indirect employment, the m &E sector employed close to 5 million people in 2019. All this is great news. However, the world has changed in the last four months. We are going through one of the most uncertain periods in, the, in our living history. Through this period, the media and entertainment sector has been hit very, very hard. The studios are just about opening up. Cinema halls are still closed and will continue to be so for some more time. Not everyone is comfortable getting a newspaper delivered to their homes. And the advertising revenues, which is a lifeline of this industry, as they talked about earlier, are down anywhere from 50% to 90% over the last few months. If I look at the full year 2020, we'll see the sector shrink to $15 billion. Even bigger challenge is the impact on jobs and the livelihood of those impacted. As we find ways to adapt to this new normal, it is estimated that around 20% of our workforce may lose their jobs, potentially impacting nearly a million people. The pandemic has forced the entire world into a conversation about trade, interdependence, and economic recovery. And to my mind, this is a moment for us as an industry to usher in a fundamental shift in the way the m &E sector works and is perceived by the world. The world needs to see us not just as an m and &E sector solving for India, but as a creative powerhouse that delivers globally and inspires the world. To realize this opportunity in India, we need collective effort, both from within the industry, as well as the government. To be honest, we have the stories and the storytellers. The Indian media industry is the biggest in the world by output. Over 500,000 hours of television content is made every year. 80,000 newspapers are published daily and more than 1,600 feature films are produced each year, 98% of this output is conceptualized, shaped, and produced in India. Each piece is uniquely crafted, stamped through the local assembly lines, distributed locally, and very often today, exported to various parts of the world. Very few industries can claim this extent of indigenous creation, be it electronics, handsets, or auto, even with factories in India, they assemble parts shipped from various countries in the world. In my mind, there cannot be a more compelling 
make an india story for this country than the media and entertainment industry also we are one of the global leaders in technology across graphics animation vfx and that is completely revamping the contours of storytelling in india in fact our technology is powering the world the dragons in the game of thrones were created by an animation studio in mumbai even more than a decade back the visual effects for avatar were powered by an indian firm when the rights support with the right support they can become a global hub for post production and support content in areas like animation vfx and game development today we have so many more screens where a billion indians can engage first came cinema where we have only 10000 screens even today in the country then came television which over the last 3 decades has grown exponentially today there are more than 20 crore tv screens and we add more than 1 crore here but with the power of connectivity and low cost of data in almost a click about 50 crore more screens across the country have been lit up today on these new screens people are watching movies reading news listening to songs engaging with the best indian drama and reality shows and of course learning new skills the potential has become more real than ever with digital connecting audiences across the globe providing powerful art and storytelling a global canvas centuries ago stories from india traveled across countries and continents without conquest or without any technology these were stories like ramayana and mahabharata or the tales of gautam buddha if they could capture the imagination of the world just on the power of their ideas and characters what excuse do we have today when it comes to films india gets less than 7% of its revenues from overseas markets hollywood in contrast earns almost 70% from the global markets despite years of applause for bollywood from various corners of the world we have still not managed to create a truly global market for our creative work and i believe that by limiting the significance of the mne industry to just economic value or jobs creation and positioning ourselves in a fragmented way as print or tv or radio or gaming or films we have long ignored the true potential of this creative industry cultural exports such as these need to be valued for their influence and the multiplier impact they can create for other sectors of the economy as well as the strategic role they can play in positioning india on a global stage and its growing global significance countries around the world like uk south korea and japan provide powerful examples how joint forums between the government and the creative industry have unlocked tremendous value for both the creative industry council in uk worked on aspects such as finance skills regulation export markets ip and the infrastructure for the creative industry and solved it by providing a strategic long term framework for each of these issues this helped the uk creative economy to cross the 100 billion pound mark in 2017 i believe and all of us in mne uh, fiki mne committee believe that we can be a 100 billion dollar industry by 2030 with forward looking policy initiatives like simplification of the taxation framework adoption of a light touch regulatory approach infrastructure status to the industry and support to accelerate exports of films and games we can enable the industry to get clarity and ensure that companies can invest with a long term growth opportunity in mind in the short term we do need to expedite some of the policy decisions which can help in the sector's recovery we need to possibly resolve some of the critical issues like tax burden on dth and radio 
it could be allowing theaters to be used for multiple activities like showing sports games or educational activities to maximize capital utilization and looking at local taxation to see if we can eliminate it broadcasting sector will benefit by ensuring light touch regulation can csr money be used for advertising of products and services which are beneficial to society today in these unique times in my mind it is not about giving cash benefits but enabling the industry to continue on the recovery path but with speed it will ensure that we pull through the next one year with minimal impact to both lives and livelihood the fiki mne committee is focused on working with the government to unlock the full potential of the industry to power india's economic engine we'll soon come back to you honorable minister with our recommendations including those emerging from the discussion in this forum over the next one week on the way forward we believe we can be the creative powerhouse that delivers globally and inspires the world and to sum up i would say the opportunity is to not only make in india but light up the world thank you uh, thank you uh, sanjay you started with the compelling story and of course talked about the creative powerhouse in terms of talent and technology and we talked about uh, you know uh, connect connectivity and costs and also creating a global uh, market uh, place as we uh, go forward through a collective uh, effort so thank you very much uh, for your address um italy as you know is the partner country to this 21st edition of frames uh, if it was held as mr uday shankar said in march we had had a large delegation physically present in india uh, but they are still here attending it uh, virtually a virtual b2b meetings have been fixed between italian delegation members and the indian counterparts we also have a virtual italy pavilion where the Ital italian companies are being represented you may visit and send meeting requests to talk to them and to represent italy in this inaugural session we have his excellency vincenzo di luca ambassador of italy to india i would like to welcome him to give his special address uh, his excellency ambassador thank you mr chenoy Namaste, good morning, and thank you very much for the invitation. Italy is proud to participate as partner country at FICI E-Frame 2020 in this unique, innovative setting of a new digital platform. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Indian government, Minister of Information and Broadcasting and Environment Javadekar, and Minister of State of Finance Takur, all the Indian partners, FICI, and the Italian institution and partner that worked extensively over the last few months to make this event possible. First of all, allow me to spend a few moments to bid farewell to a great ambassador of Italian culture and music in the world that unfortunately left us yesterday, Maestro Ennio Morrigone. There are no words to describe the extraordinary talent of this amazing artist, a true excellence of our time that through his art gave an enormous contribution to Italy and internationally. One of the quotes that I think best describe his talent is the one by Sergio Leone, another maestro of the international cinema. The synergy between the two have always been very strong. Sergio Leone once said that when working together with Maestro Morricone, would adapt his melody to Leone film that he would then readapt the scene to Ennio Morricone melodies. Maestro Morricone was a unicum as he brought classical music together with pop music. During the lockdown in Italy, people played his music on the terrace and balconies of their home. Even during the last month of his life, he was able to give back to Italy 
emotion and hope. Grazie, maestro. We'll miss you. Moving on to Fiki Ephraim, we are very happy to be here today. As you very well know, we were meant to hold a series of great events in Mumbai last March, but we have to hold the celebration off due to COVID-19 outbreak. But COVID didn't stop Fiki and COVID didn't stop our digital participation. We are satisfied that the rich delegation of companies from the Italian creative industry will have the opportunity to meet their counterparts in this magnificent platform B2B meeting and develop common projects. Fiki Frame is a unique opportunity to present to the Indian most qualified audience the best of the of Italy creative industry. Our beautiful location as shooting destination and the system of incentive in place to attract foreign production. We'll also have a special focus on animation. I would say, just uh, elaborating the previous speech uh, uh, of Mr. Gupta, that maybe Italy can give support to a more global projection of Bollywood industry, as well as Bollywood industry to give us more Asian and global projection to our shooting destination, to our production, to our handcraft. There is a lot of Italian handcraft in the movie. If you see in the last 20 years, the Oscar, many of these Oscar were given to Italian production companies or artists. Culture is the emblem of Italy and is indeed also one of the driver of the Italian economy. The creative industry in Italy as well as in, in India, but in Italy accounts for 6% of the world Italian GDP, GDP and 14% of our export. Italian creative industry is key not only to support the economic growth, but is also in Italy as well as in India, the soft power all over the world. As ambassador of Italy to India, I strongly believe that cinema plays a crucial role in the culture and economic relation between our two countries. And I would say that since this, the 50s, we had strong links between the Indian cinema and the Italian cinema. If we think about one of the most important movie directors, Satyajit Ray, who won the scene award in Venice in 1984. Italy hosts many film production from India every year. We are proud of this result and we hope to do more in production, co-production, in sharing experience for the coming future. I wish all the best to this digital edition of Fiki Frey. Dani Avant, Viva Italia, Viva India. Thank you, Excellency. Um, I'm sure this participation of Italy and Italian delegation is going to write a different story in the Indo-Italian partnership in the audiovisual sector, as you said, starting with Satyajit Ray in 1984. And I'm sure we will work together on this joint support, uh, support for taking both India and Italian film and talent globally. It is now time and we are delighted to have with us uh, this morning Sri Anurag Thakur, Honorable Minister of State for Finance, uh, Government of India. I would like to invite the Honorable Minister to deliver his keynote in, uh, address. As you know, the Minister was also the chair of the Parliamentary Committee uh, uh, before he became a Minister. And he has always lent tremendous support, uh, not only to the industry, but to Fiki. Thank you, Mr. Minister. And may, we, may I invite you to deliver your address. Thank you, Dilip Ji. President Fiki, Mrs. Sangeeta Reddy, Vice President Fiki, Senior Vice President Fiki, Shri Uday Shankarji, Chairman Fiki Media and Entertainment Committee, Shri Sanjay Gupta Ji, His Excellency Ambassador of Italy, Diluka, Secretary General Fiki, Mr. Dilip Chirai, Friends from entertainment, entertainment media industry and members of the 
Fiki Media and Entertainment Committee. A very good morning to all of you who have tuned into this video conference. Let me begin by saying, I mean, you invited me a couple of times earlier also. You invited me about a couple of times earlier also, but I could not make it. I always thought that I'll come in the next Fiki Frames edition. But who thought in the beginning of 2020 that this will be that this will be the digital uh, conference which will happen and which will bring all of us together on this webinar? But I'm thankful that you invited me to put across, put across my thoughts uh, in this. The coronavirus has unsettled long-term plans of nations. It has redefined the labor market. It has disrupted global supply chains and created uncertainty in every aspect of business. No one can predict when this pandemic will end. In the finance ministry, we are evaluating the situation regularly and as we have seen in the recent weeks, we are swiftly implementing an announcement made so far. The Adhanirva package will have a multiplier effect on the economy. If you look at this, the two decades of reforms were undertaken in the span of two weeks. India means business in a world where it is no longer business as usual. India's resilience will sail us through these testing times and triumph. We have announced the Adhanirva package, which focuses on survival of business and sets a roadmap for the revival of the economy. Modi government is doing everything possible for the Indians and India Inc. Now let me come to the theme for, the, for today's uh, conference. It is the creative economy. The creative economy is an interplay between human creativity, ideas, intellectual property, knowledge and technology. One of the key pillars of the knowledge-based economy is the economic activity generated by the creative activity or the creative industry. The creative economy and its industries are high growth sectors. If nurtured properly, can tremendously boost competitiveness, productivity, sustainable growth, employment, and the export potentials of India. The challenge before India is in the form of intellectual property, which is the IP, and the copyright digitalization skilled workforce, and access to distribution networks. Mr. Uday Shankar has rightly said that the industry is totally dependent on the advertisement, whereas globally, if you could see, the major income comes from the distribution networks or from the payment which each consumer pays. We must align all of these to accelerate and create new avenues of growth and revenue. If you look at the value of global growth or the global market for creative goods, it has doubled from $208 billion in 2002 to $509 billion in 2015. India needs to have a bigger chunk of this pie. While we create volume, we must also create value. We must, set our, we must set our goals higher. As Mr. Uday Shankar said, our ambition and farsightedness will help India. For simply being make, made in India, we must also aim to be designed in India and conceptualized in India. The question before everyone listening to me today is this. Do you want to stagnate and disintegrate or innovate to dominate? Do you want to live on hope or make it happen? Does India want to lead or being led? Sanjay Gupta ji and Uday Shankar ji, I have worked with them earlier when I was heading BCCI and my long tenure in BCCI. I have seen their aggressiveness as far as the media and entertainment industry, including sports is concerned, from IPL to the other cricket broadcasting rights. But apart than that, what Mr. Dilip Chunai has said, that I also headed the FIKI uh, Parliamentary Forum for 
US India friendship group for a couple of years and one of the delegation which I led a few years back to US I made it a point that we'll visit some media and entertainment industry that where does the future lies what are the opportunities for India and which are the sectors India can grow and trust me that trip was very very uh, useful for most of the parliamentarians we could see how digital platforms have been doing well globally so today uday ji you and other industry leaders are here let me just say this that the current pandemic and lockdown situation has shown us that work from home is here to stay direct to home which is dth has found a companion in work from home which is wfh and i could see you didn't get a haircut as well a different look a new look i must say that uh, with most of us this is the situation though i have to go to the ministry every day meet people work more than again 40 14 to 16 hours every day because this is not a easy situation for all of us we need to continuously innovate and take certain decisions in many directions and look at the areas of growth or avenues where india can grow i think the the media industry has been forced to move on from simply having print versions to digital and the bulky cameras has been replaced by smartphone broadcasts and video while jobs have been lost new ones in the digital space have been created employing millions the rise of the ott platforms means big blockbuster movies are now also releasing on app based platforms television soap stars have been replaced by emerging series stars that have a cult following nearly every re reputable media house has an ott platform to broadcast one demand content but are we truly future ready are we truly future ready and more important shock proof from disruption i could see when i interact with many industries every day through these kind of webinars though i interact with a lot of industry leaders from small to big i think uh, sangeeta ji will be giving more speeches than me today these days on these webinars on one hand while you invest billions of dollars the question also arises are you building an ecosystem that nurtures talent and growth for the future in india there is immense potential for original content creation and stimul and simultaneous job creation by investing in the vernacular language segment of the entertainment industry this represents immense opportunities for growth can ott bridge the long standing divide between the bollywood and tollywood can we create creative incubators that identify groom talent that identify and groom talent in graphic design sound animation and visual effects and in the years ahead can india capture the visual effects animations graphics and sound market mr sanjay gupta has rightly said that uh, our our talented youngsters and the industry has actually worked for many hollywood companies digitization animation india has been doing well but i think there is still a lot of scope can our media and entertainment industry champion atmanirbhar bharat can we tell stories that project new india and its product through our media and mediums this will support our allied industries and sectors it is a known fact that our media drivers it is a known fact that our media drives consumer choices and consumerism and can we project our soft power such as yoga ayurveda ancient me medicine science performing arts crafts textiles and so on i think there is huge potential to showcase india's soft power we all can do this and i think this is an opportunity for all us for all of us the way the prime minister modi says ki pareshaniyon mein bhi 
कठिनाइयों में भी अवसर ढूंढने हैं ड्यूरिंग दिस डिफिकल्ट टाइम्स वी हैव टू लुक फॉर अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड आई थिंक दिस इज द राइट टाइम फॉर इंडिया टू ग्रो द ग्लोबल सिचुएशन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस पेंडेमिक विच हैज स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम आवर नेबर इट हैज इम्पैक्टेड द एंटायर ग्लोब एंटायर इंडस्ट्री टेल मी विच country is not being impacted or affected by this globally the industry has lost billion and billions of dollars the economy has lost trillions of dollars and who has to be blamed i'm not here to blame and shame game but i'm here to say that here is the opportunity and i think indian industry can do well if our if our Films, our series, our serials, our soaps are being appreciated globally. The language can't be better. These digital platforms can help us to grow, and I'm sure Fiki is the platform through which you can put across your voice. You can reach out to the government, reach out to the various other industries, sectors, and tell us what. as a ministry we can do for media and entertainment industry because i see a lot of employment opportunities here i see a lot of growth opportunities here i see a lot of possibilities arising out of here because if you look at the last 3 years we have seen a sea change as far as the digital media is concerned and i'm sure with the use of more technology and we have seen it in the remote areas also will the elderly people also how they use the technology they use the digital platforms from social media platforms to the entertainment digital platforms this has given a lot of opportunity i'm sure india is going to do well and fiki media and entertainment uh, this group they can create a road map for india we can sit together and i am looking forward for that meeting whether physically or on a webinar again that what step the ministry of finance and ministry of information broadcasting should take for the growth of this industry i am again grateful for the fikki to providing me this platform to share my views and i end with these thoughts and this last line that every step of the way prime minister modi government will support you thank you once again jai hind thank you uh, minister uh, anurag thakur ji i think uh, for not only i think the way you ended was the complete support of the government uh, to make it happen but your words of innovate uh, you know incubate bridge the gap uh, capture the minds uh, and imagination of the world uh, act and lead and create the future i think these are very key Uh, advice and positive uh, address to industry thank you very much uh, we now uh, have a short uh, uh, message uh, and you know i uh, from the minister of information and broadcasting environment forest and climate change and heavy industry and public enterprise shri prada uh, prakash javdekar ji i take pleasure in joining you for the first virtual Fifty frames. As I have said before, virtual inaugurations is the new normal, and those virtual spaces are the new places of for real partnerships. So the gathering may be virtual, but partnership emanating from it can be real, and this is very good opportunity. Today, more than. thousand delegates have joined the fiki friends we also are conducting our virtual public meetings workers meeting so at no one place people are more than 100 but all sit separately see us or our leaders on led or to on their phone and they can join in and we have carried out successful virtual rallies 
consisting of 100,000 workers joining the rally. So I think the COVID has given us an opportunity in a way to think afresh of the way we communicate. Because now we are doing more programs. Because each program gets completed in 60 or 90 minutes. Otherwise, commuting was a big problem. And communication used to take little time, but commuting used to take more time. And therefore, today we are very innovative in that way and we have found out this solution. This is human thing. This is human intelligence. We have decided to help industry in many ways and I can assure you at the beginning that we will be partner with you because we all need to work together to make a progress and harness the soft power of India that is media and entertainment. The first among these is the government is coming up with the standard operating procedure for shooting films in India in the light of pandemic. Further to accelerate the restart of filmmaking that had come to a standstill as a result of COVID is also coming up with the incentives of production in all sectors including TV serials, filmmaking, co-production, animation, gaming. We'll be announcing these measures shortly. Besides, you would be pleased to know that the Film Facilitation Office, more than 80 foreign film producers have taken advantage of this facility. They got single window clearance for shooting of their films in India. Today in the morning, one new ambassador going to Slovenia met me. She told me that Slovenia is the best country, beautiful country, more pictures there than the famous European scenes are costly. Slovenia is much, much, much cheaper. But our people have not found that location. I think we should take advantage of that. The importance of Indian media and entertainment sector cannot be stressed enough. The content we produce, television, film and digital original, is consumed in over 150 countries. The sector generates millions of jobs, significant revenues, and despite the impact of COVID, it is growing at a good pace. Our share in the global market is small, but can grow phenomenally. Given India's cost advantage of 40 to 60% for producing the same quality of content, as advanced countries, we can achieve stupendous result if we work together. There is need for more entrepreneurs, founders and leaders in the media and entertainment sector to steer the industry forward. We need more innovation, original, origination and ownership. And the government of India stands shoulder to shoulder with the industry in achieving all this. So, all the best. I am very sure today's deliberations will definitely bring up many good new ideas. And whatever good ideas you come with, you can share with me anytime. And we will be there with you for making a progress for the country. Thank you and all the best.